There's a secret vault in Baldur's Gate 3 called the Sorcerer's Vault that will grant you three of some of the most powerful spells in the game that can only be found here, as well as almost all of the level six scrolls, a couple very rare weapons and very rare clothing, and even a permanent buff that grants you 20 temporary hit points every long rest. Hey guys, Omaha here. Today I'm gonna show you how to find the Sorcerer's Vault, what's inside of it, and how to navigate it. The vault is located inside a building called the Sorcerer's Sundries, and it's a large magical marketplace in the lower city of Baldur's Gate in Act 3. So I'll keep the video relatively spoiled or free as far as the story goes. But when you first arrive at the lower city, this is where you'll end up, right in front of these gallows here. The building you're looking for is just over this roof, that dome building back there. So you'll want to head down there and there shouldn't be anything in your way to impede your progress. Once you arrive at the building, you'll want to go inside. And there are two ways to get inside the vault. Before I show you those, I just want to mention that there's some very powerful items you can buy either from Lorican's projection here or from the tiefling named Roland. If you kept him alive all the way through acts one and two, he will be here. But if he's not alive anymore, then you'll buy him from Lorican's projection. Projection. So you want to talk to him and then you want to initiate trade. And so those items are the quick spell gloves where cantrips cost a bonus action instead of an action that can be used once per short rest. There's the ring of regeneration, which will heal you at the beginning of your turn for one to four hit points every turn. Uh, there's the vest of soul rejuvenation. Whenever you succeed a saving throw against the spell, you'll get one to four hit points and you can use a reaction to make an unarmed strike against any attacker that misses. Plus you get plus two armor class. There's the armor of landfall. We get a plus one bonus to spell save DC. And when you start your turn on plant growth or vine surface, you regain one to four hit points. You'll also get advantage on constitution saving throws and get the spell plant growth. And then there's the birthright hat, which will give you plus two charisma, which allows you to go up to 22 charisma. He also sells level six and five spells, but I wouldn't necessarily buy them from him because you can find those for free in the vaults. Now under our ways to get into the vault. Option one, you can talk to this lady behind this counter here, Tolna Tomemonger. And if you already know what she's going to tell you, you don't have to talk to her. You'll mention you're interested in some very powerful tomes. If you inquire about a certain book, any of the four doesn't matter. You can offer to buy it from her. She'll tell you no, but you can use a charisma check. Try to persuade her. So if you pass that, she will tell you the only way to access it is through her office. But you don't have to talk to her to find that out if you're watching this video, obviously. So you'll want to head up the stairs. And once you hit the top of the stairs, that'll actually open up the second path to get to the vault as well. I'll show you guys that afterwards. He's going to ask if you have any information about the night song. And he's going to tell you to choose one of the four portals. Make sure you choose the blue portal because the other three will kill you. Um, it's basically asking what the night song is. And if you know what the night song is, you'll already know which portal to go into, which is the blue portal. So before we go into there to show you the second option, let me show you this first one. You're going to want to go into this office right here through this metal lock door. We don't want these guards here to see you. So you can use something like uh, fog cloud. So they won't be able to see you. And then you'll want to lock pick the door. Once that's lock picked, you want to head inside and probably shut the door behind you so they don't see you in there. So it will look like there's nothing in here, but you'll head over to this bookshelf and you'll hit this clasped book, which will open up a portal into the vault. If you go in there, it'll bring you to the main room of the sorcerer's vault. The second option, this is the option I prefer because there's better loot along the way, is going into the blue portal. And that will bring you to this tower here. And Lorican's gonna ask you about the night song. I'm not gonna spoil anything, but you can go about this conversation pretty much however you want. Regardless of how you do the conversation, you'll wanna head down to the floor below where you start. So you can either fly down there if you have fly, or you can jump on this uh, floating furniture down here. And once you're on the second floor, there's these weave buttons. Make sure you don't hit any without knowing what they do beforehand. So this one's called security. You don't wanna hit that. That'll summon armed guards. Um, there are two buttons that you do wanna hit. The other ones you wanna avoid at all costs. So so each one has a plaque below it that can be revealed and it'll tell you what it does. So this one says below. That's the one that will bring you down to the third floor, which is where you do want to go eventually. This one over here says clean up. You do not want to hit that as it will activate all the traps in this room, like the gas and stuff. And then there's this third button over here, which is the vault weave button. That'll bring you down into the vault. But before we do that, make sure you loot all these chests in here. There's some pretty good loot. There's some gold, some decent potions. And then this one, I found a level six spell scroll. It looks different for everybody, but in general, you can find pretty good loot. So we'll head down to the bottom floor before we head into the vault. And so down here, there's gonna be two levers down here that are invisible initially. Uh, so you'll wanna reveal those. And then when you activate them, you're gonna have to roll a 20 in Arcana. And that will disable this globe of invulnerability. So behind the first one is the robe of the weave. It's to 10 armor class, very rare clothing. You get a plus one bonus to spell save DC and spell attack rolls. And then whenever you succeed a saving throw against the spell, you get one to six hit points back. And then you'll get plus two armor class. And then it's worth 2,900. So it's definitely worth taking either way. It's a really good thing to equip with a wizard though. And then the other lever, you'll roll a 20 again in Arcana. And behind that is the Marco Hesh gear. I think I said that right. Basically, legendary staff. So it'll do two to nine bludgeoning damage. It has an arcane enchantment where you get a plus 
plus one bonus to spell save DC and spell attack rolls. So if you combine that with that robe back there, that's plus two to both of those. You'll also get the ability arcane battery, which pops up down here. So it's toggleable. If you toggle it on, the next spell you use does not use a spell slot at all. And then that's once per long rest. The weapon will be enchanted plus two. So you get a plus two bonus to attack rolls and plus two bonus damage. And then it'll grant you a unique spell called Kershka's Favor. So that's a level four evocation spell replenished on a short rest. It has six different actions, each one coinciding with a different element. So the first one is Sizzling Cataclysm, which has to do with acid. So you'll get resistance to acid damage. So you'll take half damage and your acid spells deal an additional damage equal to your proficiency bonus. When you deal spell damage, inflict one turn of noxious fumes. So hostile creatures within a 10 foot radius will take one to four acid damage. While attuned to this spell, you can cast Cloud Kill and Ray of Sickness. This will last until a long rest. Then there's Frost of Dark Winter, which does the same thing with the resistance and the bonus damage, but cold instead. And when you deal spell damage, you'll inflict one turn of frost upon the target, which will give them disadvantage on dexterity saving throws. When there are seven or more turns remaining, the entity must succeed a constitution saving throw or take one to four cold damage and become frozen. On a successful save, it, is, it takes half damage. Afterward, the frost sloths away. So while you're affected by this spell, you'll get Cone of Cold and Ice Storm. Thirdly, we have Flame of Wrath. Same bonuses, but for fire instead. When you deal damage with a spell, you get one turn of heat. So you'll take one to four damage each turn, but it'll also give you heat convergence. So you can consume that heat to fuel a powerful attack. So when you deal fire damage next time, you'll deal an additional one fire damage for every turn of heat remaining. This will also grant you the spells Fireball and Wall of Fire. Next up, there's Bolt of Doom, which does the same bonuses, but for lightning. When you deal spell damage, you get one lightning charge. So lightning courses through you, you'll get a plus one bonus to attack rolls and deal an additional one lightning damage. If you gain five charges, they are consumed the next time you deal damage and you deal an additional one to eight lightning damage. So you'll lose one charge per turn. This will also grant you Chain Lightning and Lightning Bolt. Then there's Deadlier Than Arsenic, which does the bonuses for poison instead. When you deal spell damage, inflict one turn of poison upon the target. They'll suffer disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks. While attuned to this spell, you get Cloud Kill and Ray of Sickness. And then finally, there's Bone Shaking Thunder, resistance to thunder damage, and more thunder damage on your spells. When you deal spell damage, inflict one turn of reverberation upon the target. So they're gonna get a minus one penalty to strength, dexterity, and constitution saving throws per remaining turn. When the entity has five or more turns of reverberation, they take one to four thunder damage and possibly fall prone. Then the condition will be removed afterward. So while attuned to the spell, you're gonna get Shatter, and you're gonna get destructive wave. So it's a very versatile spell. There's a lot of things you can do with it. It's a super strong weapon that I definitely recommend grabbing, especially for a wizard. And while you're down here, make sure you loot this display case here. You're gonna have to roll a 15 in dexterity. It's gonna grant you a heavy iron key. And then you'll want this gilded chest because it has the Sorcerer Sundry's mystery door key. And you're gonna want that down in the vault. There's also another display case down here. This one for me had a level six enchantment spell. And then you'll hit this weave button when you're ready to go back up to the second floor. So now I'll head down into the vault and I'll show you guys how to navigate that and what's in there. Okay, now we've arrived in the sorceress vault through the tower. If you arrive through the uh, office, you'll be right over here in this area, just to give you your uh, point of reference. If you are coming from the office side, this will just look like a wall. From this side over here, the tower side, you can just pull the lever to open it. If you're on the uh, office side, there's an invisible button right here. So you can push that to open the wall as well. Inside this first room where you come in through the tower, there's a display case. You'll want to lock pick that and you'll have to roll a 20 in, dexte in a dexterity check. And when you pass that, you'll want to read the Red Knight's final stratagem. When you read that, you'll get the scroll of artistry of war. Now this is the only place in the entire game where you can get this scroll and there's only one. So I'd highly recommend having a wizard in your party or somebody that has multi-class with at least one point in wizard so you can learn the spell permanently. So this is a level five evocation spell. It's basically an overpowered version of magic missile. So it's going to summon six master strategists, each one dealing eight to 18 force damage on a hit. And then you can use this once per short rest. The damage number here is actually incorrect. It doesn't do eight to, se to 78 damage. It'll actually do 48 to 108 damage. This is also noted on the wiki that the damage number is wrong. So you'll multiply eight by 18 times six, which gives you the 48 to 108. You'll choose six targets. There you go. Also in this room, you'll have some metal crates and um, a couple chests on the edge of the room. Here, there's a level six scroll for me. It looks like you can't walk on this, but you can. You don't have to worry about it. Some gilded chests in the corners. Just make sure you loot everything. See right here, I have three level six spell scrolls. These spell scrolls are worth 600 gold a piece. So you'll come out of this vault with a couple thousand gold regardless. But if you have a wizard in your uh, party, they're gonna have pretty much all the best spells in the game after this vault. If you move back out into this hallway, there's two locked wooden chests. The loot's 
it's pretty mid, to be honest. You only have to roll a 10 for this. Got some alchemical items. This one actually has some uh, good gems and a diamond that's worth 220 gold, so I guess that chest wasn't too mid. But before you go into the next room, there's a secret wall behind one of these chests. So if you walk behind it, you'll see the secret room. And there's a lamp here. Now, before you touch this, I would highly recommend having a party member with either the banishment spell or somebody that can summon a creature. So I can summon Scratch here. Just keep that in mind before you touch it because you're going to swap places with the gin in here. So he talks about how he's been trapped forever. Thank you for sacrificing yourself. And he's saying thank you for sacrificing yourself to save him. Because you basically have to trade places with him. And you do have the option to fight him if your party members are outside when you get transported into the lamp. But he only grants you 250 XP and he doesn't drop anything at all. Around 250 HP. So to get out of this lamp, you basically always have to have someone in there. And actually, while you're inside this lamp, there's some chests in here. With uh, There's actually a scroll of summon closet for me in here, which is a good spell to teach a wizard. Some good potions. There's a bunch of camp supplies. 250 gold. And then a third gilded chest over here, some potions. So pretty decent loot. A lot of camp supplies though. And there's even a hookah if you want that. But back to how to escape. You can use this, the banishment spell or you can send out your summon. So I'll use Scratch, even though he's been a good boy. You'll want to move the lamp with your summon because you can't pick it up. And then uh, your guy will be out of the lamp and your summon will be in there. So I can just dismiss him since you can just resummon him again. So he's not actually trapped in there. And then the lamp will be gone. Back out here in the main room, there's some more metal crates. Uh, again, I recommend searching everything because... There's some good scrolls in a lot of these things. Some gold. Uh, the stacks of scrolls, especially you want to search. There's level six spell scrolls in some of these. Like Sunbeam there. Wall of Ice is in this one. And again, these will be uh, different for everybody. Anyways, let's move on to the two vault rooms. Now we'll move on through this door right here. There's another hallway like the first one. Again, two wooden chests. The loot isn't necessarily the best loot ever, but it's still worth checking out, in my opinion. This one had 250 gold for me. And then there's yet again another secret room in this hallway as well. So you'll walk behind the chest again like you did before. And this will bring you into another room with with caution before the sealy. So you'll want to click that book and it'll give you the spell scroll, scroll of bestial communion. So again, you'll definitely want to give this to a wizard to learn. And so this is a level five conjuration spell where you can summon a diva that can cast wrathful smite, revivify and concussive smash. So there he is. He has 136 HP. He's level 10. Here's a stat line. It's pretty good. He's pretty stacked. He's an armor class of 21 as well. So he's going to be extremely difficult to hit. He has his diva mace, which does nine to 42 bludgeoning and radiant damage. He can fly. He has wrathful smite, which does 10 to 40 of bludgeoning, radiant, and psychic damage, which and it also possibly frightens the target for two turns. He's got revivify, so you can revive a companion even if they're dead, and they return to life with one hit point, and you can use that once per long rest. And then he has concussive smash, which does 9 to 42 bludgeoning and radiant damage, and it possibly dazes your target for two turns. And then before leaving this room, just make sure you check the rows of books, and there's a gilded chest up here. Moving on through the final door, this is where that key's gonna come in handy. You could just lockpick the door as well. Once you enter this room, you're gonna notice there is like a gazillion traps in here. In each of these rooms, there's going to be several of these rooms. Each one has a lever that's invisible. If you can't see a lever here, just cast the invisibility and then you should be able to see it. So if you activate that lever, it's going to turn off all the traps for that room. And then you should be free to walk around. You don't have to worry about traps in this room. So this first room, the two vault doors are the Karsus door and the Elminster door. So you can't go through those until you unlock them. So either way, you're going to have to go through the Silverhand door. So first you go through Silverhand. Again, another trap room. And then here's a lever over here to turn those off. You want to make sure you do that every time. And first, we'll show you how to get into the Karsus vault. You'll want to head through the Abjuration door. Yet again, you're going to want to hit the lever and then you'll want to head through the silver door. And heading through the wrong door, I think just activates the traps in the room, but it sends you back one room as well. So if I went through shadow, uh, just brings me back to this room again. So I'll head back through adjuration and then you'll head through that silver door. Like I mentioned before in this room, there's going to be a pressure plate here. Just make sure you either disarm it or walk around it because it'll activate this gargoyle head. Uh, you'll want to hit this lever. So hitting that will unlock the Karsis vault. And then you can head through any of these doors to head back to the previous rooms and then head through transmutation to get back to the beginning. So now you're back at the beginning, and now the Karsis door will be open. So you can head through the Karsis door and into the Karsis vault. And there's no traps or anything in here. There is this book here, The Annals of Karsis. So you'll want to read that, and that'll give you the spell scroll, Scroll of Dethrone. This spell scroll is also only found here. You can't get anywhere else in the game. There's actually a second one here next to the book, so make sure you grab that. So this is the only one where you're going to be able to get two of them. This one's also going to be a level 5 spell. It's going to do 3 to 80 necrotic damage. On a save, they're still going to take half damage. You can cast the spell once per long rest. So here, I'll just uh, use it on the ally. Just to show you guys what it looks like. 
Save failed, he took 59 necrotic damage. And then again, you're gonna wanna check these stacks of scrolls. Level six spell scroll there, another one. So every single one of those had a level six spell scroll in it. This gilded chest here is gonna have a very rare weapon called the Foe Breaker, which will do three to 13 bludgeoning damage and it will ignore bludgeoning resistance. It's also got an enchantment where it'll do plus two to attack rolls and deal plus two bonus damage. And then it also has tenacity. So when you miss an attack, you still deal one bludgeoning damage anyways. Then to get into the Elminster Vault, you'll head through Silverhand again. This time you'll wanna take the Evocation Door and then make sure you turn on off this lever again because this is a different room and then you'll want to head through the wish door so this one's the same as the other one there's gonna be a pressure pad here just disarm it or walk around it and then you'll pull that lever and head back to the beginning again and then your elminster door will be open and you can head into the vault so here's the elminster vault so there's a codex in this display case if you remember back at act one if you read the necromancy of thay book that's the person you're going to want to interact with this book so the person that read the necromancy of thay book in act one is going to be the person you want to activate this book my character read the necromancy of thay book in the beginning and i passed all the skills checks. So I'll activate this codex. It mentions that book again, and it's going to give you a curse. Your constitution is reduced by five while you're cursed. You can just use uh, remove curse to remove that. You'll want to go to your necromancy of Thay book and read it again. Then you'll want to roll a saving throw. This is going to be a wisdom check of 20. So after you pass that, it'll keep reading. This is going to give you a super powerful necromancy spell called Dance Macabre. You can create four ghouls that will fight alongside you and they'll last until a long rest. You can also use this once per long rest. Activating that, you choose four locations. And you will get four ghouls that will follow you and fight alongside you. Each one has 20 HP. Here's their stat line. And they have an armor class of 17. The condition gnawing horde basically just means they follow you and fight alongside you. They have the claw attack, which will do 5 to 15 slashing damage. And it will possibly paralyze the target for two turns. So they won't be able to move or take actions, bonus actions, or reactions. And any attack within 10 feet will be a critical hit. They'll also get the ability to devour. So if I had a knocked out prone or sleeping target and deal 6 to 33 slashing damage. And you'll heal for the same amount of hit points. So with four of those guys running around with you it's it's a pretty strong spell and then again along with the other good loot you get in these uh chests around here uh one of these chests will have the pyro quickness hat so when you deal fire damage with a leveled spell you burn yourself and you'll take one to four damage per turn but you'll get an additional bonus action that turn and then there is one more secret to show you guys before we end this video if you head to the silver hand door again that final door the illusion door has 12 hp you're going to want to destroy the door and behind it is a little secret room with a gilded chest with the hellfire great axe so this will do 3 to 19 fire and slashing damage and give you the ability thermodynamo whenever you deal damage with this weapon you get two turns of heat so you'll take one to four fire damage per turn but you can use heat convergence and that heat convergence is going to let you consume the heat to fuel a powerful attack next time you deal fire damage you get an additional one fire damage for every turn of heat remaining it's also enchanted with a plus two so you get a plus two bonus to attack rolls and deal plus two bonus damage and that is everything for the sorceress vault if you guys like this video hit that like button because it helps me out quite a bit it'll show it to more people also subscribe if you guys want to see more videos like this thank you guys so much for watching we'll see you next time